Alright yo guys, what is up? It's your boy Reko64 here, back again with another video. Today we're going to be playing some Toontown Rewritten. This is going to be the Let's Play episode number 14. It's been a whopping 7 months and change since the last time we recorded the series. I apologize in advance to all the OGs out there who have been following since part number 1, and especially the OGs who have been following since the first series where I nearly got to episode 300. Without further ado, let's get right into it. I got a nice, uh, fun story. I, get, I don't know if fun's the right word, but I got a story to share with you guys, especially as to why I haven't been posting or really doing anything online for gaming and all that, right? And it, it comes with like a, a nice little theme or message to it as well, which is always nice. So I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving, and I hope that I upload this shortly after recording this and I don't wait a long time to post it. That'd be fantastic. So, cheers to that. Uh, Hope you guys had fun with the family, if not, hope you had fun with friends, or at least just got a good meal out of it, right? Something, something good, or something to be grateful for. There's always something to be grateful for. So, uh, what I wanted to make this video really about, right, is this story that I've had to hold on to for a really long time, and I have not been able to really share it or anything because of, uh, just to be blunt, like, legal issues or legal repercussions. And so, now that this is finally settled, for lack of a better term, and I will always put the preface of this is a fake story, uh, if anything happens to be or seem real, or some of the characters might seem real, just know that this is creative writing to me, essentially. None of this is freaking real, man, so... Uh, let's, let's get right into it, though. Looks like this is all cash bots. I cannot find a single freaking cell bot here. I got one. So hopefully I don't get absolutely dumpstered here, that'd be fantastic. I feel like I am with a level 5 and a level 6 already, and I'm only level... only 36 laugh. So, this is the story, boys, alright? It was June. It was June... late June, okay? I was driving home from work, right, after a really long day. I had to stay... I had to stay really late for something that was actually very positive. And, uh... It was... Essentially, like, a really important meeting I was a part of, and had to stay pretty late, and then I was driving, uh, me and my girlfriend home work after she had to stay a little bit later because I was staying so late. It was already a little bit weird, right, for the normal day. And then there was actually construction, like, major construction happening on the way home that I would normally take, so I had to take a different route. So, two weird things already off the bat. A little, I was driving home a little bit later, and not taking my normal route. And so... What was so weird, man, and I'm, I'm gonna preface it with this too, so, probably 20 minutes before, right, we're about, we're about 10 minutes, 15 minutes out from work to home, and my girlfriend just tells me, uh, man, you know, I just, I need a break from, like, this work, constant work, sleep, repeat, grind. And as much as I feel for that and everything, I was like, oh, that's that's just life, you know? I mean, you work, you sleep, and you repeat. I mean, obviously, you gotta do stuff in between, too, but that's also just surviving. All right, and here's the crazy thing, right? I'll actually, I'll, I'll go back to Playground and pull up uh, Microsoft Paint. Or whatever it is, just Paint. I don't even know if it's Microsoft Paint, damn it. So look at this crude drawing within paint, right? We are driving home. <clears throat> oh shit, I messed up too. There we go. <coughs> so, basically what was happening is, this is me. <clears throat> driving on the road, just going straight through, right? Nothing crazy, just, just another day, dude. Just driving through. And, uh, was absolutely nuts is when I was about right here, <clears throat> this other driver decides that it's time for him to go. It, the scene is safe. It's time for, for, it's time for me to start heading through here. And so he was about here when I was there. <clears throat> and so what do I do in this situation, right? So... This this is like really freaky to me because it was it was almost like I was not given an option to make a move that didn't involve some serious damage. 
So, this is me. This is them. I know you guys love the drawing, it's amazing, right? So, <laughs> these are really my options, right? So, option number one, I head, I slam on the brake, right? Slam on the brake and go in this direction. So I hit the back side of his car, and we kind of both go into this into this V-shaped ditch, right? That's off the road here. <clears throat> Option number two, I stay straight and slam on the brakes. So the issue with this is I probably would have killed him. We would have been in much better shape, though, in my opinion, than going off into the ditch. Because if I would have just taken a hard right, and gone off into the ditch, I don't think we would have made it. <clears throat> so that's option number one. Let's go into the ditch. Take a hard right, slam into the back side of his car, and then go into a ditch. Option number two, it, which is probably uh, what will happen to most people in a sense, right? I mean, you just slam on the brakes and hope that you don't hit, but you hit. And so in this case, it, it would have likely killed him, the, the driver. And, and it would have been... Uh, would have been his fault too because he just failed to yield a stop sign because he had a stop sign i had nothing i was just on the straightaway <clears throat> and the last one option number three is try to weave into the opposite lane that luckily had no cars over here and hopefully this guy will slow down and i can just kind of redirect myself out of here and not hit anybody so what i did if you guys could guess was option number three and by the time I actually got my car over here, he continued to push out. So I hit his car like that, right? Collision, uh, completely destroyed the front of my car. His car went all the way over here into the ditch, completely fucking destroyed. He was okay, no injuries or anything. Uh, my car, though, however, all the front of it was completely gone. And I went into a ditch over here and uh, hit some hit into a forest too, so... <clears throat> the thing that stopped my car was the trees. And... I might I might throw in some images here, because this just looks like an absolute clusterfuck, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I, I apologize, this isn't visually the most appealing uh, thing you could ever see in your life, that's why it's fucking paint. But, point being, uh, especially since this is around like Thanksgiving time and everything, right after this, right? Right after all this, and what was crazy about it too, I immediately just felt this sense of uh, just being so grateful. Even though the situation was terrible, right, and you kind of almost just feel like a complete victim in that sense because, <clears throat> like, what could you have done, right? I mean, in my opinion, I made the best possible decision to avoid loss of life for either of us, given that truly it was not my fault because they did not stop our stop sign. And so, to add to the story, right, I get, uh... I get out of the car, I mean, it's, it was a little bit of a panic, especially for the girlfriend, and, uh... I was just like, hey, you know, the car's, like, smoking pretty bad, I think it, I think it might catch on fire, we're gonna have to get out of here and, uh, just get a little bit away from the car in case it starts to catch. And so, I pull myself out of the car, it's really hard to get out because, uh, we were actually in a forest, so we were kind of pinned down in there. So then I open the door for my girlfriend to pull her out. She's obviously not doing well, significantly more injured than me at least, partly in, in, due to the fact that I was just running off of pure adrenaline. <clears throat> so I get out of the car, and I know there's like there's a lot of pain, especially in my right knee. And so my immediate thought of it is like, shit, dude, I might not ever be able to uh, like really run again. You know, I mean, this 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 is pain that I have not felt. It's, it's really like a deep pain, you know? It doesn't even feel like just like a bone break. It felt like something kind of worse. And uh, so I remember pulling a uh, girlfriend out and she was saying, you know, my chest just really hurts. And I was like, I know that that really sucks and everything. I'm going to call 911, get us an ambulance. We'll get ourselves all checked out and make sure that we're good before we get out of here in case there's any like bleeding, internal bleeding, anything like that. You know, you never really want to risk it. So, and also I knew, just to be blunt, right, I knew, like, since it wasn't our fault, right, 
that their insurance will eventually cover it, even though we will get uh, absolutely fleeced in the short term. And that's just kind of how like American medical is. And this isn't to be like a Debbie Downer or anything. This is just kind of a reality. The ambulance trip is like thousands of dollars here. So it's just something to keep in mind. If you have an option, generally you shouldn't take the ambulance. I mean, unless you're absolutely fucking dying, in which case go for it, I guess. Point being though, I get out of the car. I ask to see if that guy uh, the guy who hit us, uh, or at least just failed to yield the stop sign, was doing okay if he was injured. He said he wasn't injured, which is great. Good news. Happy he wasn't injured. And we went on the ambulance, and that was that. So, got to the hospital, and sit in the waiting room for a while. Because <sighs> they were full. We sat there for, I don't know, like an hour before we actually got... Uh, any real form of treatment or anything, and my girlfriend was much worse off in shape than me, so I had them take her first. So, for me, my... I guess my total situation was, uh... I had some metal shrapnel stuck in my thumb, so I had to get that pulled out. Uh, I had a ton of pain in my right knee. And what I found out later, which was really interesting, was uh, I actually had a torn PCL. So a lot of people know what ACLs are, but I don't think a lot of people know about the PCL. And uh, neither do I when it really comes down to it. But what I found interesting and what the surgeon told me that I thought was interesting too is in terms of uh, probability, right, you are, I think, I think you said 20 times more likely to get an ACL tear than a PCL tear, and the most common way to have a PCL tear is from a car accident, from your knee hitting the dash in an accident, which seemed to be exactly what happened in my case, as I was slamming on the brake, and then the impact of the crash pushed my knee where it clearly shouldn't have never gone. So, uh... They told me it was a 50% tear, not all the way torn, so thank god I didn't have to get surgery, but it's definitely not even near 100% even to this day, so I really hope that in time uh, I can at least really run without too much discomfort, because right now, like, I did the first, I did like my first real exercise, like really heavy duty exercise, and it really fucking hurt, but, uh, what happened with my girlfriend though, she had uh, internal bleeding, a broken sternum, and then some other complications as well, and so she had to take off work for two months from that. And so uh, me, like with how stubborn I am, I took off one day when she was in the hospital, I stayed overnight with her. And uh, it was so, like, so weird. The situation was so weird, man. I've never really experienced anything like it where it was like, so my car was totaled, right? I mean, there was no way that you could drive that thing. And hopefully I remember to add an image to this too, if you guys see this, just to see. It was, it was a pretty gnarly crash. <clears throat> and so I was in the, uh, I was in the hospital. And I was staying overnight, I was trying to stay overnight with my girlfriend because I wasn't sure how bad her situation was. And I remember the nurse coming up to me and saying, like, you gotta go, like, you cannot stay overnight here, you're not allowed to. And I was like, I don't have, I don't have a car to drive, drive home with, like, it's totaled, man. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you, like, I guess I can get an Uber. And then she was like, shit, and then she asked, like, her people and made sure it was okay, and then... And then that was good enough to where I could stay the night to make sure that her heart was okay, because that's what they were most concerned about, is that the there's internal bleeding, and with a broken sternum, you don't know if it, if it actually damaged the heart or not. And so they are doing all these tests to make sure that the heart wasn't damaged, so I had to wait until the morning to make sure that her heart wasn't uh, damaged. And so thank God uh, it wasn't the case where she, her heart was not damaged, it was just a clean break of the sternum, and uh, so she had to take off work for two months. So, what was really interesting to me throughout this whole process is, this guy that hit us was a pretty young guy, I mean, 
I've done some pretty stupid things when I was young too, so it's no, uh, like, it's not meant to be disrespectful, but he was so unapologetic about it, and he thought of himself as a victim in the scenario, even though he blew a stop sign. So, uh, flash forward from that incident to a couple months after, let's just say, as an example. And I was at, uh, I got, I got a police officer that showed up to my house. I was a little bit freaked out about it. I was like, why, you know, like, what's the deal? And uh, what's crazy is they, they subpoenaed me to testify like as a witness against him. So it's like the government versus him because he's had a previous record and he's got more stuff kind of on his record as well. So he's clearly not doing too well, clearly uh, an upstanding citizen. So I think about it for a while and I'm like, if he ends up doing something stupid again, killing somebody, I am going to feel that in my conscience for not uh, going after this guy a little bit more. And then with the pure inconvenience and uh, like loss of everything for me in that process, I was like, it's probably fair that I at least give the, like, give the government my statement to at least be fair, right? Because the thing is, is, if I didn't show up and there was no witness, then he'd probably just get off almost completely with nothing, right? Besides the cost of insurance. So after uh, police show up to my house and that, I say, you know what, screw it. I'll talk to the prosecutor and I'll I'll try to get this to work, right? I'll try to, I'll, I'll leave work the day of and I'll go to the... Uh, courthouse and give them my statement it's something i've never done before it kind of freaked me out a little bit and so i went and this was probably i don't know let's just say like 40 days ago 50 days ago so i go into the courtroom then and talk to the prosecutor who gives me the questions like i'm going to be answering for the statement and I was like, okay, makes sense. So we get into the courtroom finally, and I see the guy who hit me. He goes up to the judge, because it's a thing called a bar trial where essentially it's just him versus the judge. It's the law versus him, and I'm just a witness. There's no real like risk. Everything has been confirmed that it's, what the clusterfuck is that, dude? Do you guys think I can snipe the micromanager on this? I think I can. I didn't, I fucking failed miserably, dude. That was a, that was a disgusting combination of cogs. But anyways, to get back into the story here, though. Uh, the, the defendant, let's just call him that, goes up to the judge and says, I want to file for a continuation, which if you guys don't know what that means, it means I didn't expect the witness to show, actually show up when he was indicted, so what I would like to do is uh, stall in hopes that he won't show up the second time which was fantastic, so... I... I sat there for like three hours waiting for this fucking thing, wasted my day of work, and then he just files for a 45-day continuation. And so, I was like, well, that's that's just great. I mean, clearly he doesn't know me, because if you do something like that, then I'm definitely gonna show up the next time too. But obviously he doesn't know me, so... Another 45 days pass, and this is all just sitting in my head. This is just lingering, right? It's not good. It's, it, has, it has not been a good experience for me. And so, the day finally comes, right? It's like, oh my god, dude, fucking finally. And all I can think is, is that he's gonna file for another continuation. And go up to the courtroom. It's a different prosecutor this time, which is a little bit weird. I kind of expect it to be the same person and talk to the different prosecutor this time. Same thing, kinda talks to me about what he's gonna ask me about, all that stuff. I'm like, all right, sounds good. It's great. So, go into the courtroom, go to sit down. Prosecutor goes up to the defendant and he's like, this is your final chance to be able to uh, make take a plea deal. And given, I didn't tell you guys this before, but uh, 45 days ago, that first interaction, he was also given a plea deal. And if you guys don't know what that means, it's essentially you plea guilty, like you say you were wrong, yeah, you were in the wrong, and you get a significantly more lenient sentence. 
but he said no. And this time, I was like, he's gonna- he's stupid if he doesn't take the plea. I mean, you cannot argue that you were in the right after ripping through a stop sign, man. Like, there's no way that this guy wins this. And so, like, they were talking for, like, 15 minutes or something in another room, and I was like, okay, he's gonna accept the plea, and this is gonna be, uh, not necessarily, like, super depressing or anything for me, but at least he finally admits fault, right? That's fine. So they come back, he doesn't accept the plea deal, he still wants to fight it, and I'm like, Jesus, dude, this guy is something else. I finally give my statement. It wasn't, he, nope, he didn't try to file for continuation, I don't know, I think he needs an actual reason the second time, which obviously he didn't have. And so, give my statement, ask questions, very basic stuff, like, what were you doing? It's really weird, you just kind of feel like you're in almost like a TV show, you've seen so many of the like, Law & Order crap shows that it, it seems so weird to actually be present during that. And so, they ask me very basic questions, I answer, especially about like, the conditions, the road, that kind of stuff. And then, the actual defendant asked me a couple questions too. And the first one he asks is, do I know the speed limit and how fast was I going? Answer, you know, both. I was going the speed limit. So, then the second thing he asked me, which was super weird, man, is where do you think you hit my car? And what was crazy about this is like I've, in my head to this point, right, I've experienced this thousands of times. Like I've, I've remembered this memory like thousands of times. So he couldn't have asked me a better question, really. So I answer saying, like, I hit the front left of your car, like, right in front of your driver's side door. So it wouldn't hit you, obviously, right? And he was like, that's weird because I thought you hit the back of my car. And I remember, dude, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, it's it's only the front of your car that's destroyed. That's the only side that would have gotten hit. The back side of your car is completely fine. And, like, scientifically, it wouldn't make sense either with how I hit him. If I would have hit the back of his car, we would have both been in the same ditch. If I hit the front of his car, then he would have gone to the opposite ditch. So, like, math and science, like, are checking out here. I guess that's part of it, right? And so, after all that, they have me leave, because they're like, they, they just asked me to leave, I guess, which is fine, whatever. And what's really weird is what happened after, and he just starts going through these, uh, excuses one by one, you know, kind of seeing what he can get himself excused from in terms of, I don't know if it's liability or his fault, but every time he just gets shut down. The so first thing he mentions is like the visibility, then he saying that there was a hill, which I mean, you guys know, state Illinois, there's really not that many hills, and it was really funny where uh, the judge actually shut him down so bad because she knew that exact intersection and she knew it was a problem. So she was saying that is not something that uh, is not something that is a thing. Like it's what you're saying is not real, and uh, she's essentially just saying it's your fault. So that at least felt a little bit nice because it's logical. I felt like I haven't experienced a logical interaction like that in a while. And then once all else fails, he uh, brings out the classic waterworks. Probably worked well on the bomb, but it kind of just cringed me out, man. And during all this, never once did he tell me sorry. Never once did he ask, like, hey, hope you're doing okay, like, health-wise. Just nothing, you know? He genuinely, truly, I believe this, he did not feel sorry for what he did. He did not feel like he was in the wrong for what he did. From his perspective, he thought I was going like 95 miles an hour in a spacecraft, and he was turning legally or something, dude. I don't know. It was really weird, though. Like, I've never really experienced that where... I shouldn't say I've never really experienced that. I've never experienced something that serious where somebody was unable to apologize or say that they were in the wrong when they were almost certain... Well, not almost certainly, certainly in the wrong. So that's just really, really weird to me. Like, you almost killed two people, and yet you're still holding up the victim card. It's like there's no, uh... There's no thought in the mind at all that you almost killed two people. 
and if the other person that you hit wasn't paying attention, then you yourself would have been dead and would have never had to had the chance to go to court to argue it in the first place. So that was a really interesting experience for me, and I was kind of locked out of really doing anything about it, saying anything about it, whatever you want to call it, and it was messing me up for a little bit, man. I mean, I was pretty depressed because I was unable to really do anything physically. I really only took one day off of work from that too, which was also a detriment to my health, because it took a lot longer for my, for my leg to get any better when I'm constantly using it. So that was a really interesting experience, but overall, like, I was still extremely grateful that nothing worse happened. You know, I had this great sense of relief that none of us died, even the person that hit us too. I was grateful that he didn't die, because, I mean, not only for his family, obviously he has a family too, but just because then that would also be weighing on my conscience as well, which would have not been good. I mean, people make mistakes, obviously, you know. It's just the thing that burned me the most about that was his complete lack of, like, sympathy, empathy, whatever you want to call it, where he just did not care about us. It's like, for what I could tell from his conversations to me, the only thing that he cared about, right, or the only thing that he thought I cared about was money. It's like, did you get your money? It's like, dude, <laughs> there's more important things than money in this world, my man. I don't know what to take here. They all, they all suck. We got the bean counters one. But so, like, obviously it was it was a struggle for a bit because I didn't really have another car and I needed to drive and get to work and everything. But now I got a new car. I really like it. I'm happy with it and everything. So that's that's great. And I'm starting to build back up because, especially fronting all the medical bills, it was pretty terrible at first. But the good thing is, though, I had all that paid off from me, and now it'll get reimbursed eventually as well. I just gotta wait for all this insurance crap to end, which takes fucking forever. I don't know if anybody else has been through it, but it's just not fun. It is, it's a nightmare, man. But, I mean, the TLDR from this experience is it was one of those life-shaking moments where you start to appreciate the little things and think, you know, I was definitely getting burned out from work. I was definitely working too much. I was just working and sleeping in a lot of cases. And now I'm starting to feel more grateful for even that. Where before, I mean, I wouldn't say I was, like, complaining or anything, but it's just there wasn't really much else going on. It was just working and sleeping a lot of the times. Alright, there's another bean counter. I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, short story here. If you did, let me know. If you didn't, I understand too. I mean, it's not really the greatest story, but it's something that affected me for a, for a good couple months. Now I'm also excited to get back on the video creating grind, I feel like, I mean, the last time I probably uploaded was about a month or two months ago. And I miss it, you know, I really do miss it, but it's really tough segmenting the amount of time you need to be able to do it too, and figuring out all of that. There, there are times when you just think you have enough time to record and it's just, just stuff gets, stuff gets in the way, man. Life always gets in the way, but you gotta find a way to keep going, too. And part of it for me, too, is this is, like, completely from enjoyment, right? I mean, when it really comes down to it, if I was doing this to make money, I would just work more, right? But this, to me, isn't even worth, uh, I shouldn't say it like that, but it isn't beneficial for me to do for money, right? This to me is almost like a way to express myself. It's like art. It is truly like art for me. And I like it that I've got my regular job, so I don't have to... I don't have to throw in uh, mid, mid roll baked ads into this to be able to continue doing it. Does that make sense? It's like, yeah, it's less frequent, 
And I'm planning on increasing that as well. My goal has always been one video a week. And that's going to be a tough goal for me to hit with uh, how work is. But if you guys would like to see one weekly upload, please let me know down in the comments section. And uh, just in general, like, how are you guys doing today? Because I'm grateful that all you guys are alive and hopefully doing very well. I'm very grateful for that. I'm grateful that people are still even sticking around from this channel since it got hacked. That was something that I was worried that I would lose any uh, semblance of like community. Looks like all I've got now are just for fun tasks and then micromanagers. Yeah, that's it. I get a big head. Just for the lols. So we actually got somebody here, his name's Research. I think he might be able to join and help us out here. Research, if you're there, man, thanks for joining on the Discord and thanks for uh, checking the notifs, man. I always want people to play with on this game, especially when I do recordings, and it's gonna be more and more tough to get all of this to work in terms of content and everything if I don't start bringing people in or if I don't start uh, having people at least physically join in the game, right? Not necessarily all uh, in voice comms or anything. Although I would really like to do that as well. What's been really weird is, uh, especially very recently, and I don't know if I'm just going crazy or if it's because I'm working way too much so I don't really have a sense of connection with a lot of people that I was connecting to before, but a lot of the people that I talked to before, I haven't really talked to recently. And I'm not sure 100% what the deal is with it, right? I mean, we obviously, a lot of us share different views, and that's like completely fine. Like, I love different perspectives and everything, but... It's just like you... You get to a point where... People just kind of... Friends, people just kind of drift off. That happens like naturally sometimes. But the amount of people that I've been gaming with has gone down to like one to one and a half small groups. Which normally before, especially when I was like recording everything, it would be like endless. Endless and uh, it almost felt like I didn't have enough time to hang out with like half the people that I wanted to, right? Where it's like now that I'm not posting or recording or anything, it almost feels like nobody wants to uh, like chill or hang out or anything. It's just such an interesting dynamic because you start to like hyper rationalize or analyze where it's like, whoa, like do people only want to hang out with me when I'm posting stuff onto like YouTube or Twitch, which is really weird. Like, were they really ever your friends in a sense or were they just there because it was convenient at the time, right? Or because of some other reason. And that kind of stuff I find really interesting. And I hope obviously is not the case, and I hope just like anything else that there are just times where, oh dude, look at that, bloodsucker conga line. Where, you know, everybody just gets busy. And everybody's out living their own life and everything. But I do notice it, man. I do notice it and it's, it's weird. Weird feeling. It's almost like in order to retain or regain relationships, I need to start recording and uh, streaming in mass again. And I mean, that would, that would also kind of prove it too, in a sense, right? Is this, do I have Do Dr. Oscar added? I wonder if this is uh, research. I'm gonna hit him with the, s the squirt gun. Friendly, thank you. Good timing, yes, yes. Great timing. But yeah, if you guys want to join me in uh, any of these adventures, for some reason my game crashed. Oh, no worries, dude. If you ever want to join me for any of these adventures, man, join the Discord at discord.gg slash 64 
generally I just ping at the Toontown group. So just if you're ever in that server, man, just ask for the Toontown role. And then whenever I pop into Toontown, I'll just go ahead and give an at and it'll ping you guys. I'm always looking for more people to chill with on this game too. The only thing that sucks is just with how work and everything is, I do not have a large amount of free time. So it'll be like a Saturday or a Sunday and that seems to be pretty much it right now. But still, fun nonetheless. I forgot to even mention the end to the story, man, so... I can't believe I, I, I cucked you guys, I cliffhanged you guys for that long, I apologize. So, basically, towards the end of it, right, the judge literally asked the dude... ...and said, uh, essentially, like, how far away was my car, my car, when you made that turn? And the dude said, like, 25 yards. Like, first off, dude, who the fuck makes an estimate in fucking yards, man? Who does that? Who in God's name does that? 25 yards? That's pretty fucking close, man. And even before that... I didn't even mention this, dude. Even before that. Uh, I just need one micromute. So I, I, I'm ruining the story, guys. I apologize. But so they asked how... F the judge asked... Okay, that's fine. Dude, I'm seriously cliffhanger Andy right now. So let me let me just rephrase it, right? So the first thing she asked was how far away was my car when I when he started to make the turn. How far away, right? And you know what the dude said? The dude said seven seconds away. That doesn't make any fucking sense, dude. If I was seven seconds away, I'd be going pretty damn slow, first off. But then she said, no, like I need like a like an actual distance, you know. Not, not like seconds. Seconds doesn't make any fucking sense. She didn't say that, but that's what I what I feel she wanted to say. And then so the dude says 25 yards. And I'm like thinking of the math in my head, like first off, who the fuck uses yards? But the second thing I was thinking is like, what is the distance for that, man? Like, what is the speed that I was going if I was truly seven seconds away and 25 yards away? And... Correct me if I'm wrong, Math Andes, please, but, I mean, is that, like, what, like, six miles an hour or something like that? Right? Like, am I am I wrong? Is that is that six fucking miles an hour? It's gotta be slow, man. 25 yards away and seven seconds away? I mean, the dude literally just buried himself in a fucking premium grave. You can see the judge was not satisfied with that answer, and after that, it was pretty much a fucking done deal. I didn't think there was anything that was truly gonna redeem him either way, but... She slaps him with the big dick of the law and says, Guilty. And I feel a giant sense of closure and relief to where I can finally end this legal chapter of my life. That was fantastic. And it really was just like a good feeling to know that uh, I was doing the right thing, right? Like, obviously I don't like it that I get a guy punished for something, but when he was clearly feeling no sense of remorse for almost killing himself and two others, and potentially way more if I didn't... Uh, drive properly or anything like that. It could have been much more people involved. So, I hope that he learns learns and learns his lesson, and also that he feels that... I don't know what it is, dude, what the person's missing in their head, but I hope they feel that sense of actually feeling sorry and hoping that people aren't dead next time. Because that kind of just rubbed me the wrong way, man. But he's, he's a young person. It's got plenty of time, I hope, to figure it out, but... Yeah. Got the big head. Massive doinker, dude. to invite you to your group. 
We'll just go to him. Alright guys, that's it for this video. I'm gonna try to record one right after. So if you guys want to see another one, please let me know down in the comment section below. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.